I'm Ed Frawley. I'm going to explain in this video how the Educator Pro 900 works when it's set up for two and three dogs. It's a little different. It's complicated. I say it at the beginning of all of my videos, and that is we don't recommend this collar for new dog trainers. The only people that should be using this collar are professional dog trainers. Even if you want to become a professional dog trainer, this is not the collar to start with. There are simpler collars out there. Call us, email us, we'll tell you what we would recommend. Use these other collars for a while before you step up because there's features on here that I would never use and for sure a new dog trainer never needs. But let's start talking about the two dog collar. When this is set up for two dogs, you'll know that it's set up for two dogs because you're gonna have a one and a two flashing just above your stimulation level. If it's set up for a three dog, you're gonna have a one, two, and three flashing right above your stimulation, stimulation level. Simple to get to. I explained it in a previous video. You just hold down the on and off and you press the on and off and the S1 button at the same time. And it, it had been set up for three. I did that, it got one beep. Now it's set up for just one collar. I'll set it up for two. Hold down the on and off. Two beeps, I got a one and a two flashing on the dial. Now it's set up for two dogs. If I wanted to have it for three dogs, hold down the on and off and press S1, and it'll, be, it'll do three beeps. You can listen to it, I'll hold it next to the mic. I got a one, two, and three flashing above my stimulation level. So let's back off. That's how you do three. I'm gonna put it on a two dog mode. So I'm gonna hold down the on and off, push it once. It beeps once, one dog's flashing. I got it set for one, uh, one, tra or one receiver. Hold down the on and off, push it again, S1 again. Two beeps, now, now we're running on that. Two receivers, one transmitter. When you have it with the one and the two showing, the buttons and the function on these buttons totally changes and your ability to program them changes. When it's on the one and the two dog, the S1 button, the top one on the side, is dog one. The top one on the front is dog one. The bottom one on the side can be programmed to the functions or features that you want for dog two. And then the, or the red one on the front, the S4 button, is dog two. So you can program them, and we covered programming in my earlier programming streaming videos, but you can program them to the features that you want. You just have to remember, top side, top front, dog one. Bottom on the side, bottom on the front, dog two. Simple, that's not that hard. So, let's add another collar though. That's when it gets a little dicey. Not dicey, but you know, this is not an easy collar. So now, the first thing we wanna do is to set it up for three dogs. So I'm gonna hold down the on and off and press S1 at the same time. I'll put it near my neck so you can hear it beep three times. I looked, I got three, one, two, and three flashing. The transmitter is now set to work with three dogs, okay? But on the three dog mode, your buttons all change again. And what are they? Well, even I have to think a little bit. It's still the same for the first dog. The top one on the side and the top one on the front are dog one, okay? So you can program them to any of the features that you wanna have programmed. And again, that's in the other streaming videos or this would go on forever and ever. Bore the devil out of you. But when I look at the three dog mode, the front button, the S4 button, is now the only button that can be used to program for dog two. 
Dog three is the S2 button. Wouldn't you have thought, wouldn't you have thought that they would have made the S2 button for the second dog? I don't get it. It is what it is. The second dog is the red S4. Third dog is the S2 button. There's only one button for the second and third dog, and there's a caveat. <laughs> With the educator, there always is. The caveat is this. If you program this one, S4, or the two dog, that's the two dog, or the, the three dog, which is S2, if you program those buttons to momentary or continuous, you can have actually, <laughs> this is a little goofy, you can actually have a momentary or continuous and a momentary or continuous boost. So if you're, say, on the second dog, you have this programmed, the red button programmed to continuous, I can hit the continuous. It's now, pro it, it was programmed to vibrate. It's talking to me. Let me turn it off. Back to this boost, two button boost feature. You can only do this in the three dog mode. You can push, if it's programmed to momentary or continuous, we'll say it's programmed to continuous. You can push this button for the second dog. And if you push the button above it, the button above it becomes the boost button. Same thing on the side. If you program the, the third dog to have momentary or continuous, you can press it, push the button above it, and that'll be the boost button for what you have programmed there. So you can have momentary boost if you program this to momentary. If you program that button to be continuous, you can have continuous and boost that way. Complicated? Yeah. A lot to learn? Yeah. Can you get that out of the manual? Not in your lifetime. This is the crummiest manual ever put on any product anywhere. I'm sorry, it sucks. I didn't learn this by myself. I had to call a factory that I had to play with for a long time before I got it. So I would recommend that, again, if you're gonna be a professional dog trainer that wants to learn how to use this thing, figure out how to program it. Go back to my other videos, the other videos explain the features. They, they explain how to program the various features. I have another video on how to pair a new collar, and then this video that explains what the buttons are and the functions are for one, two, and three dogs. So in this segment, we're gonna talk about the vibration and tone mode. When the unit comes from the factory, it's preset to have a factory default for the level of vibration or the level of tone that is on the collar. But there are different levels of vibration and tone. To change them, you can't program it by just using your transmitter. You have to connect it to the computer and change it that way. I will tell you that the computer program that Educator has put out was done a year and a half from now, and whenever you watch this, it'll be further, and it doesn't work with all operating systems. So it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work. To me, that's a problem with Educator. Uh, they can say it's a problem with, with uh, operating systems. I think if you're gonna have a feature on your product that can't be changed unless it's connected to a computer, then you better make sure that your programming works. But anyway, let's assume that it does work so you understand how to do this. You plug it into your computer and you have different options for different levels of stimulation. One of the levels is to have either a vibration or a tone. You can't have them both on the same button. So either vibration or a tone associated with stimulation. You can set it so that if you program this on the computer to be vibration stimulation, you will get one and a quarter seconds of vibration, and then it will switch to 30 seconds of stimulation. And that stimulation level will be set according to what you dial it up to on your dial. So it can be what you want. 
Same thing with the tone. You can program this on your computer to be a tone stimulation button. And the same thing, you use it, it, it will give a tone for one and a half seconds, and then it switches to stimulation at whatever level is on the dial for 30 seconds. So it's your choice. If you plug it in, if it works on your, uh, on your computer, you're gonna be able to change the different levels of vibration, and the one of them will be vibration and stimulation. You'll be able to change one of the buttons to tone, and that'll be different levels of tone, and one of them will be tone and stimulation. But you can't have tone and vibration on the same button, just so you know that. I think that covers it. If you're new to remote collar dog training, I recommend that you learn how to train with a remote collar correctly. Learberg has done a number of DVDs and streams and courses on remote collar training. I tell people that the remote collar is the greatest tool that's ever been invented for dog training when it's used with low level stimulation. It's also the most abused tool that's ever been invented for dog training. That's why <laughs> you see all these animal rights people out there bad mouth in the use of a remote collar when if they had learned how to train with it correctly and had done low level stimulation they would very quickly learn that the vast majority of the times that a good dog trainer uses a remote collar is at low levels levels that a human can't even feel the use of a remote collar when it's done correctly is like tapping your dog on the shoulder and saying hey come on pay attention to me just do what I want you to do it doesn't have to be shock the dog it's not hurt the dog it's hey come on pay attention to me if you bought any brand of remote collar from Learberg you got the free stream on uh, remote collar training for the pet owner uh, if you wanted it in a DVD, you got a 50% discount. In the second stream, I'm going to talk about how to fit the collar on your dog's neck. I'm going to talk about how to determine the levels, the working levels of stimulation for you on your dog. Every dog is different, so we're going to talk about that in the second stream. I'm going to talk about the ramp feature, how it works, why I'm not a big fan of it. I'm going to talk about the instant, instantaneous feature, the eye feature on the remote collar. And again, that's a feature that's designed more for professional dog trainers, but I'm going to go over it in detail. I'm going to talk about the light, why you have to be a little bit careful because it sucks a lot of battery power. Uh, I'm going to explain how to lock the stimulation features down. There's a lock feature on this. Uh, I'm going to explain how to program in the lost transmitter feature. Most of the people that use the belt clips might want to have that. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way, sorry, Greg. Uh, I'm going to talk about how to program your transmitter by using the USB that comes with it and programming your transmitter with your computer. Now, your, your transmitter has a factory default of vibrate and tone. Those two features have different levels, but the only way you can change the level of vibration or the only way you can change the level of the tone is by hooking it up to your computer and changing or reprogramming the transmitter with the use of your computer. So we're going to go through all of that in the second, in the second stream.